Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. Friction is nothing but trouble. Friction destroys instrument resolution and it destroys control quality. In the last videos, we showed you how to easily measure friction. Here, we show you what your options are if friction is too high. In the last three clips, which I urge you to study first, we showed you how to calibrate zero and gain of systems with friction. We showed that friction causes uncertainty in actual nip load on the product. We also showed how friction prevents you from running low nip loads, else you risk bouncing off the product and possibly causing a crash. For these reasons, Friction must be measured before you do anything else with the control system. The results will be that actual nip loads, not the ones you see on the control panel, will lie in an uncertainty band instead of on a line or at a set point. This is true even if the cylinder pressure is controlled perfectly. We can see here how we must adjust the calibration of zero such that bouncing nips never go to or below zero. That also means that the low average nip loads are not possible with systems bound up with friction. Shown here is an example readout of the load on a cylinder clevis as read by a load cell. Note that the pressure regulator, which is already a closed loop device, was as good as you would normally find on industrial equipment. In this example, we would not talk about signal to noise ratios. Here, the noise is bigger in size than the signal roughly 2 to 1. This example, by the way, is one of the most common winders in one of the most technologically mature of the web industries, the secondary arms on a paper machine reel. However, it can get much worse. I worked on an old tissue winder where the nip load uncertainty was 10 times the size of the desirable nip load. What this means is that the nip load is quite variable and that variability is unfixable by getting a better regulator or by adding load cells, at least in the majority of cases. What this means is that the nip load setting is pretty much a do nothing knob. In other words, it doesn't matter much where you set it. The actual nip load on the product will be all over the place. By now, some of you are probably wondering, can I fix the friction by adding more grease? The answer is almost never unless the pivot, slide, or part were rusted. Also, repairing or replacing parts will not usually fix it, unless there was some noticeable binding, such as due to severe misalignment. The reason that you seldom can fix this problem in the field is because this is a design problem, not a maintenance or operation problem at least in most cases. Before you consider your options, you need to know two things. First, how much friction you have by the measurement methods described in previous clips. Second, how much is too much? Is 20% too much? Or can you take 200% because the application is tolerant. Laminating nips and craft paper winding nips are usually tolerant. 
while tissue nips never are. If we decide we have too much friction, we have two options. The first is to live with the problem, and the second is to redesign the nip loading system in very specific ways. If we decide to redesign, we need to know how much friction is coming from each of the many elements in the mechanical control system so that our new design addresses the worst ones. The control system contribution is the easiest to find. Simply disconnect the cylinder pin and stroke the piston in both directions while measuring the pressure required to just extend and then to just retract. Some of this uncertainty is regulator or E to P hysteresis which can be found in the valve performance specs or by direct measurement. The bulk of the rest is the piston seal. In either case, going from pneumatic to hydraulic can greatly help in these component frictions. The balance of everything else is mechanical. Mechanical sources are usually the biggest by far. However, measuring the individual contributions can be quite difficult to set up without changing the very value we're trying to measure. In general, you will find that chains, gears, and slides will have noticeable friction. In general, you will find that pivots and hydraulic components have very little friction. However, as they say, your mileage may vary. So, you must measure the components on your specific make and model of machine. In conclusion, if you own a machine, you must know the amount of friction and uncertainty you have in the control systems by actually measuring it. If you are buying a machine, you may want to consider putting in a maximum friction into the purchasing spec. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. Please stay tuned for more web machine and web handling topics. Let me know what you would like to hear about in the comments below. Please like and share if you found something here to be interesting or useful.